Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Chris Ogle once again here Friday afternoon, 4 p.m. for the L4G Southwest Hearts News Show. And uh, today I've got uh, Diane with me. Hi, Diane. Come and say hello. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. Well, in fact, I'm not going to say too bad. I'm quite good now, actually. I've been a bit ill of the last uh, week and a half, but things are things are on the way up. Uh, I feel almost normal again now. <laughs> good, good. So the eyes are no longer black shot. Yeah. Yeah, that was awful. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, enough about me. Let's um, let's head straight into some of the meat of the show. What I'm, what we're going to do today is a little bit of a different uh, format. Um, I'm going to just kick us off with uh, uh, some of the regular regular stuff about what's happened in the past week, and then we're going to have a little look through the uh, the Southwest Hearts website. And if you follow the way we do that, you'll be able to do the same thing. In fact, yourself and check out the stories and if you want to post one of your own then please feel free to do so remember that the southwest hearts district website is here for us all to participate in not just uh, people that you see on this uh, show now we have got our new cards printed as i mentioned last week if you want to check out where the uh, the website is it's that uh, http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly forward slash sorry no I, yes yes forward slash l4 g s w hearts so uh do go and check that out there's other if you, you can pick these cards up in various places in the high street uh we'll be getting some uh sticky logos for all of the different traders to be uh, put in their uh put in their windows so that uh, to say they're supporting by local um which is all part and parcel of what we're doing here at uh uh, link for growth and community so um last week um we had uh three events in the southwest arts district first one was on saturday we were back at the market uh catching up with uh, everyone there on uh wednesday we had link for drinks over at rickmansworth in the fox and hounds now, if you are in Rickmansworth, come out and support that event because we're real, really starting to work on uh, Rickmansworth now and there's lots of people who live there and uh, it's your town, so we want to uh, we want you to basically be participating in that. It's not a mass migration from Watford to Ricky sort of affair. It's about building it for the people of Ricky. And then on Thursday, we were in uh, the Mercure in the bar downstairs and uh, I'm having a coffee from 10 o'clock onwards that was on Thursday the 9th and uh, here we are today on uh, Friday the 10th so uh, okay so Diane um, I just want to mention um, one video that I did this week which is a bit different to other videos that I've done and I might I might actually show this um, with the viewers. So if you just hold on a second while I career off and um, share my screen. <clears throat> now, let me share that screen. Right. Uh, can you see that, Diane? Oh, I can now, yes. Right. Okay. So um, if we go into the TV section... <clears throat> What you're going to see is you're going to see a load of playlists, all right? Now, what I want to do is I want to draw your attention to this first playlist here. Now, that there is Link for Growth Changing Lives, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking to people who are <clears throat> involved in Link for Growth and explaining, uh, in their words, these people are explaining their words, what Link for Growth has done to help those uh, help them uh, in in their own video, you see. So, so that's one. But there's also another video channel that I'm going to be introducing, which is going to be um, where have I wrote it down? Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Where have I put it? Uh, it's going to be what's your story? <laughs> so. 
what's that what that's going to be is an opportunity for people to have a video interview where they're explaining a bit more about themselves so not what they're doing not the job but kind of how they've got to where they are so that's coming soon a couple more playlists there which i think are going to be uh, uh really interesting actually um so uh yeah um let's pick up where i've left off here we go right so uh diane um what's uh, what's occurring well before you go on i'm just going to say i found the interview you had with alex to be really fascinating and interesting and i, I would recommend it to anyone um you know, who, who's interested in what link for growth does and how it can help them um and i think because i think uh, alex tells a quite a compelling story yeah i mean um <laughs> i won't spoil the video if you've not watched it please do go and have a look at that video but uh alex is a young law graduate he's uh, just about to finish and it's a really competitive industry and um alex certainly believes and i and i do agree with him that link for growth is uh, is going to help him find work in what is a very very competitive sector of the economy so uh um you know it's quite amazing when you talk to people uh, what actually Link for Growth means to them. It could just mean an opportunity to meet other people and have a conversation. It can be as simple as that and a place to do it. Whereas for other people, it's um, it's about business growth or finding people with experiences in different areas of business that they perhaps don't have and, uh, and basically doing quick pro quos or collaborating in some way. So a real range a real range of uh, of reasons and as those videos develop and grow i suspect we'll uh, we'll uncover a few gems in there that's for sure we've got to do one uh, for yourself actually diane and there's a few hidden secrets in there i shouldn't imagine <laughs> Um, yes, I'm, I'm somewhat reluctant to appear on camera, despite appearing on the, on this show uh, for three or four occasions now. But uh, yeah, that's my um, that's my that's my own private uh, issue sort of thing. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about some events that are coming up. Um, right. First two I was going to talk about are um, next week and uh, a couple of weeks away. But the reason why I'm mentioning them now is that they is that both the organisations involved want people to sign up and register as early as possible so they can all, you know, help them all, so would help them with the organization of things. So the first one is the Young Greens Day of Action, which is taking place tomorrow week uh, at 10 o'clock. <coughs> I know that um, Neil Emery, who from Reason Cafe, Cafe, is helping with the local organization of this thing. It's, uh, it's a big event. It's apparently nationwide. <laughs> all trying to um, attract um, green activists to, to become much more involved in what is um, you know, obviously an important issue to them and uh, it's, it's uh, going, as I said, it's going to take place at 10 o'clock next week. You can find out more details on the uh, Young Greens uh, <coughs> Action Watford Young Greens Facebook page and there are all the details there. Uh, That's fabulous. I mean, that's um, um, Neil had a. <clears throat> I think it was Wednesday evening. Had the Young Greens uh, with their first gathering in the Reason Coffee Shop, and there were, I think, there were eight people there. Well, that's a pretty good turnout, and um, you know, I know it's something that Neil is very uh, committed to, and um, a big supporter of, and um, you know, obviously. You know, if Reason Coffee Shop is doing well, then obviously it, it helps promote the green cause as well because uh, you know, he is very committed to it, uh, as he is to link for growth, which is fabulous for us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> so what? What's um? What was the other? Um, you haven't got to sign up for that though, have you? Well, it says that they want to. Uh, they want a rough idea of numbers, and so they sent out some invites to people and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think if I think I think it would just help them with the organisation if they knew how many people were coming. But uh, if you know, I think if you if you're suddenly free next Saturday morning, you want to turn up. I'm sure they'd be delighted to see you. Excellent. 
Okay. The other event that uh, where you need some future warning is on the 29th of April. The Watford Observer are holding a uh, or promoting an election hustings event at your old alma mater at Watford Boys Grammar School. So that's Wednesday, the 29th of April at 17 uh, 7:15. Um, however, though, if you want to if you want to attend, they ask that you email them your name, address, and phone number, along with five questions you would ask. You would like to ask the candidates. So in a way I suppose it's very similar to when question time comes to Watford. You can't just turn up on the night. They want to make sure they get the right kind of political balance and uh, uh, an audience obviously that live in Watford so that, that, um, that you know that you're asking the questions to the right candidates sort of thing. Um, if you're interested in attending then you need to email um, sfar, S -F -A -R -R, at london.newsquest.co.uk with the subject heading Observer Hustings. All of these are found in the Observer in both the printed and the online versions. Um, what will then happen is they'll have a look through the questions and where people live and make sure they're eligible to vote in Watford, I would assume, and then the Watford Observer will invite them to the debate. They're also looking for first time voters, which links in or ties in very nicely with that first thing with the Young Greens, where they <coughs> think. Um, you know, it, it's, these are people who are obviously committed to politics, and they would probably be a good audience for some of the observer, some uh, the observer are looking for for various bits and pieces. Um, the other event I, I was going to highlight um, is actually very close. It's this Tuesday coming, the 14th. Um, Walford and Bushyar Society, who I know very well through my work and their association to the Women's Centre where they've exhibited a couple of times, and Watford Camera Club are holding their annual competition, Camera versus Paintbrush. And what happens here is that 15, each organisation has selected 15 photos and paintings, and then, then these are, um, are, are judged, or will be judged on Tuesday night by an external expert who will give an appraisal on the artistic merits of all these, um, uh, of, of these entries and score them. Um, and he will then um, pronounce the winner. Um, usually the events are quite close, I'm told. Um, the last couple of times I understand that Watford and Bushy Art Society have won each time, which I think um, they're quite pleased with. The event is happening at Tenants Hall, which is Watford Grammar School for Girls in Ladies Close. Um, there is an entrance fee of £4, which is payable on the door, and it starts at 7.30. But I think it'd be a really good, if you're interested in art or in photography, painting and everything, it'd be a good way to go along and meet meet the members because I know the both organizations are looking for new members all the time so I think it should be a fun evening out and something a bit different um, the other thing is to understand that Watford Waterways Experience are looking for new volunteers um, and I'm sure that Alex can post more on that on the website in the next few days yeah they're um, they're coming to their busy period of course the uh, Sun is blessing us with its presence once again and um, and so they need <coughs> people to do all sorts of things, right down to gardening around the uh, visitor centre, right the way through to training people how to steer and operate the boats, etc., etc. So <coughs> there's a wide range of <coughs> skills required, even social media or using uh, things like Google Drive and, and setting that up for the organisation and helping them manage that in a efficient way they're filing their online filing so there's all sorts of <clears throat> different uh, ways you can get involved down there if you fancy doing a bit of volunteering yeah and I, I mean I, I used to volunteer for a local charity and I um, found it a really rewarding experience uh, it's a great way of getting out and meeting <laughs> People, if, you know, and some people live in flats but want a garden and stuff like that and this is a great way of uh, uh, living your hobby as it were in you know if you, if you can no longer have access to a regular garden or, um, or if you're fascinated in boats you know they're, they're great people to know and, and as we know from the link for growth coffee the other week that um, they can be really um, they're a really warm and welcoming bunch of people absolutely right um... Now, there's a couple of other <coughs> events that are coming up. One of them is, um, I think it's a week Wednesday, which is the Michael Green Foundation 
Um, not hors d'oeuvres, what do you call them? Um, uh, oh, what are they? What are they? I forget the name of them now. Um, anyway, it's making some little things which you can eat. What are they? What are they? Petty fours? No, <laughs> no. Hang on a minute. I got the blimmin. Uh, I got the uh, what's it? A canapé. Canapé. Okay, canapés. Canapés. They're the fellas. So here you go. Um, I think I think actually this is all sold out now. I don't think you can actually buy any more tickets. I might be stand to be corrected if Catherine's watching this, but uh, unfortunately. I can't make it now because I'll be away in Hungary. So it looks like you're going to a canopy evening there, Diane. Oh, great. That sounds, sounds great on the waistline, Chris. Yeah, I will send, take that along to the market tomorrow and hand it over. So uh, okay. congratulations on that uh, on that little win. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's, it, I'm sure it'll be very good. And, you know, Mike, Mike Green stuff do do an awful lot of... Um, wonderful work in, in promoting you know type 2 diabetes and, and <laughs> they have uh, um, a sponsored runner in the and i just need to double check here uh yeah jordan silver has run the london marathon for them so if you want to sponsor him you can get details through the michael green foundation um and uh, virgin money giving fundraising and type in jordan silver London Marathon 2015, if you want to sponsor him and help raise money for a fabulous cause. Excellent stuff. And um, they also were in London, I think, yesterday, um, talking to someone about being on breakfast TV or something or other. So <clears throat> obviously getting quite a lot of um, uh, interest in uh, raising the awareness of uh, diabetes type 2, which has hitherto been a little bit underestimated in its significance which is resulting in a lot of people suffering needlessly to be honest it's a bit of education about basically teaching people what they can eat what they can't eat and you know how to regulate and manage things and very often it can be achieved through diet alone <clears throat> but you've got to know what you're doing and you've got to understand the severity of the situation and the consequences of not doing it and if you don't know those things you can't take action so it's really uh, really important stuff that they're doing um yeah. I'm, I'm also, sorry chris uh, they're also planning a, an, eat, an eat well and eat right um, event or series of events courses um in the watford area like they've just finished in st albans i know that i know that but i haven't got any dates at the moment so that's one to to watch out for in the, in the near future um I understand that the St. Albans one was very well attended and a lot of people found it very beneficial and I now think they're looking to repeat the, the course uh, locally to us here in Watford. Fabulous. I'm just going to um, spend a, a very short time, but a little bit of time here, just taking you through uh, where you can <clears throat> find out about the news that we're reporting during the week and even make some of the news that we might well feature on these new shows. Uh, I'm just going to take you to the site now where you can actually go and see that. So um, I'm just going to share my screen once again and uh, so you can see this. But um, this is the uh, website that uh, now that's its extended um, uh, name l4g-swhearts.blogspot.co.uk but you can actually type in that link that I gave you earlier, which is bit.ly forward slash L4GSW hearts. And if you click on that, it will take you through to <clears throat> this website. Now, this website, you can get access to everything that uh, we've been talking about so far. You can get access to the local TV channel where we do all the recordings of people in Watford. You can go through to see what events we've got coming up, which we'll be talking about in a minute. What's on? This is a calendar that's got all the local events in the community. And if I just scroll down, you'll be able to see here that we've got a calendar loading, which has got <clears throat> lots and lots of things happening, um, including the show today. And uh, we want to populate this with all the events that are happening in Watford. 
and if you want to if you've got if you go there and you can't see yours on there let us know we can either set you up so you can add them yourself or we can uh, put them on there for you <clears throat> if you're not yeah, sure what you do you want to say something I was just going to say, Chris, I think it's worth emphasising they're not just linked for growth events, they're just anybody's events that are happening in, in the Watford or um, South West Hearts area. Absolutely. And the, and the really nice thing about this calendar, it's a Google calendar. So if you're using uh, calendaring on your mobile devices, you can actually hook up and add this to your diaries, which means that uh, you can pretty much on your phone get reminded of pretty much everything that's going on in the Watford area, which is fantastic. We also, in Link for Growth, run a load of training and workshops, and you can access that through this part here. But also down the left, <clears throat> a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today has come from this community, which you can click on. And this is where we uh, pick up information and post information about what's happening in the Watford area. So you can see there that Alex has just posted about Richard Harrington's latest newsletter, which is there. <clears throat> he can't obviously call himself MP anymore because we're in that Purdue phase, apparently. Um, but Waterways experience is here. This is where they're asking for different types of volunteers that Diane was mentioning, the action for the Greens the, the week Saturday. So this is where all of the local information about what's going on around in Watford is, is put. Now, you, you can update this. You, you, all you've got to do is ask to join this. And if you live in Watford, you can also post in here about what's happening <clears throat> and get involved. And, uh, and if you want to come on the show and, and, and be part of that, then you can do that as well. And um, in actual fact, if I just scroll down here a little bit, you'll see here there's a section here, photos. And you can just look at all the different photos that we've been posting up over the months and you can see here all of the different pictures that are included in all the posts. And there's a fair few of them now. Here's the Waterways Experience pictures that Diane put up. <clears throat> there's the green candidate, uh, Aidan. <clears throat> Ducks, Watford at night, oh, honey. You know, you name it, there's, there's stuff on here about it. So really awesome. You should get involved. Do come along and participate on this uh, online stuff um you really will um you really will find it quite interesting it's a bit like a news magazine for what's going on in watford all the events uh pictures stuff like that and if you've got some stuff that you're proud of or you want to talk about just bung it up there <clears throat> The other thing is you, you briefly touched on it about the training and, and the courses that Link for Growth run as part of the Link for Skills thing. And I've been on several of them and I'm currently doing one at the moment. I have to say each, each and every one of them has been absolutely fabulous and they are very good value for money as well. So it's well worth you know, joining for, just for that or um, you know, trying to get in um, or, or, or putting your name forward to, to get on these courses because they are really easy to understand you can kind of choose the level that you're at there is beginners and intermediate courses being run all the time um and it's all done through google hangouts there's no no t trouble getting to it to events or anything like that and th th i can't speak highly enough of them and someone i was speaking to at an event said oh i know uh, i know carol who does a lot of the training for link for skills and uh, they were singing her praises to the to the, to the nine so it's well worth you know getting some training from a great trainer yeah i mean we we often don't mention it enough really but there's lots and lots of people out there um struggling with social media uh, not quite sure what they're doing the fundamentals to get the basics in place first don't 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 just rush in there and <clears throat> thrash around you're probably better off to get your profile straight, get yourself organized, understand what everything is. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> excuse me, then talk to people at Link, at Link for Growth because the wonderful thing about people at Link for Growth is they're really interested in helping everybody. So you just have to ask questions and guess what? People give you the answers. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. And I think that's also picked up by things like the L4G Mingle that we had the other week where, you know, that's a Twitter fest across the whole country. And you know, all of a sudden, you find yourself speaking to people who you wouldn't normally. Who, you know, 
if I was stuck in a particular issue and they were able to tweet a link to me that, that meant I could go away and solve that particular um, IT issue. So that's kind of fabulous and normally you'd have to pay a small fortune for that kind of advice and help. So that's another reason why you should get involved. Fantastic. Right, now I'm just going to give everyone <coughs> a quick update on the market. Now, I've just been down there. Last night they had a meeting uh, which was between town and country and all the traders. Now, if you remember last week, I mentioned uh, what was going to be happening was they were going to be opening on a Sunday. Well, there is more detail than this. And I'm just going to, I took a picture of the letter that was sent out. <clears throat> now, they're splitting the market into two sections. They're downstairs traders and the food court upstairs. And there are different rules for each. So as of the 21st of April, that's not next week. It's not this Tuesday. That's the Tuesday after. The downstairs market is going to be open Tuesdays, Thursdays, Friday, and Saturday. So that's four days a week. So basically, Wednesday's gone. The up as of the second of June, the Thursday goes as well, but you get a Sunday. So it's going to be Tuesday, Thursday, sorry, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's as of the 2nd of June. Upstairs, different story. As of a week, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So they are still open on a Wednesday. So that maintains their, that's, as it is right now, basically. So they stay as they are. So I'm not quite sure why they've put this in here because it's not changed. From the 1st, 2nd of June, they're going to be open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that's six days a week. Well, it sounds to me as if um, you know, this is an uh, an evolving story and it's one of these things that I think we we'll have to keep a regular um, eye, uh, po posting um, yeah, an eye on and, and post on a regular basis because obviously uh, the last information we had I think this time last week we were talking about all the changes starting to happen from the 14th of April and they weren't exactly the, the changes that you've outlined uh, just now so obviously there's still a lot of negotiations going on um, and we'll just have to keep everyone up, up to date with, with the news as and when we get it. Yeah, so basically from a week Tuesday, from a week Tuesday, in the market downstairs, you lose Wednesday. So it's as it is now, but no Wednesday. Out on the parade, it's as it is now so no change yeah. tuesday through saturday <clears throat> upstairs from a week tuesday no change tuesday through saturday so the sunday element doesn't kick in until the second of june anywhere so the only difference is we're losing wednesday downstairs in the market from a week Tuesday. That's it. For now. For now. And the 2nd of June, um, and from the 2nd of June, actually outside, it doesn't change it either. Upstairs, they go to six day week. Uh, 2nd of June, doesn't downstairs go to Sundays? Yeah, but they, lo you, they lose they lose Thursday. Yeah. So that's it, really. It's um, let's see how that pans out. The crux of this is, if people don't open on a Sunday, they lose their twenty-five percent discount. Oh, okay. 
that's really interesting and I could see it working for some people they might not like it and I can see that some people will object but I wonder how about say the fishmongers might um, open on a Sunday because of course they won't have any stock because the big market their big markets like Billingsgate will have already um, you know don't open on Saturday night as far as I know well, I don't know. I talked to Joe today, and I said, "When do you go down to um, when do you go down to Billingsgate?" And he said, "Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday." But what I think he means is, he goes down Tuesday at two o'clock in the morning, which is just Tuesday. Yeah. Thursday, which is just Thursday, two o'clock in the morning. And Saturday morning, which is just two o'clock Saturday morning, it's not Saturday night. It's Friday, just going into Saturday early in the morning. Yeah, because you know, I mean, often you know the Arthur one, which is where I shop for fish. You know, you go there at three o'clock, and there's nothing left. Yeah. Especially on a Saturday, yeah, you because know, it's so popular. So um, with that. The fact that their markets aren't open, does that mean that they will lose their 25% discount because it won't be open? Or do they with a whole sort of tray of ice and no fish? Um, I don't know is the answer to that question. I'm sure that Joe is not interested in going in again, and I'm not sure that he'd want to sell fish that he hasn't got fresh that day. Exactly. So, uh, anyhow, um, what have we got coming up this week then? Just to wrap up, uh, Diane. Okay. Well, this was quite a busy week for uh, Length Growth. Uh, there are one, two, three, four different coffee events happening either in Watford or in the surrounding area. And, of course, there's also Link for Drinks. So, starting on Monday, there's a Link for Coffee at Reason, um, cafe on the parade in Watford High Street, top end of Watford High Street, near to the town now. Town Hall, and that's between 10 and 11.30, um, and they're usually very well attended, with, and it's usually a good event. Then on uh, Wednesday, there are there is an event in St Albans, and I mention it because some people in, who live in Watford might work in St Albans and be interested, and also because it, it um, it's held at the Metro Bank. Um, it's a link for coffee between 10 and 11.30, uh, at the Metro Bank in St Peter's Street, and I think it's a really good way that you know business and community are starting to meet up. And if we're looking about things about link for business and that sort of thing, it's a good first step into that that kind of area. Um, the other event that's happening on the um, uh, uh, sorry on the six, the other link for coffee event is happening on the sixteenth. That's in Boreham Wood. Um, Chris, perhaps you could fill in a few details with that one. Um, Boreham Wood on Thursday. Yeah, the 16th. Um, is it? Yeah, it's a holiday in at the Barnet Bypass. On, on the 16th? That shouldn't be on the 16th. That should be on the 9th, uh, the, the 17th. Okay, well, on a link for coffee uh, on Eventbrite, it's on the 16th. Okay, I think that's an error. Um, that should be uh, that should be the seventeenth. It's it's the third Friday of the month that one, and it should be on the on the seventeenth. So we might need to just edit that, unless there's a reason why it's a day early. Uh, and it might be that one of the hosts couldn't make it, but it's uh, it's relocated that event from um, uh, from the village which is in um uh well it's not actually in Bournemouth, it's um just to the side of Bournemouth. but anyway we moved it from there because it was um not working so well and now that's been moved back to the holiday inn which is uh which is a much superior venue so yeah and then we've also on the 16th I hope this is right, Chris. Um, we've got a link for coffee in Ealing, which, of course, isn't that far into London from where we are. 
Um, yeah, I think, I think that is right, um, because that, that always clashes with Cardiff Bay and Stroud, which is a lot further away, of course. Yeah, and uh, it's at the Lime Yard restaurant, um, you know, and it's quite close to a couple of the tube stations down that way. Um, I've not I've not been to it, but um, I would imagine it's quite a nice event because eating can be, you know, interesting part of London with uh, lots of interesting people. <coughs> Absolutely. And then uh, on the 16th, we have Linkford Drinks in Watford at the... Um, starting at 6 o'clock in the evening, and that is, um, again, at Moons Under the Water on Watford High Street, and uh, the last few have been uh, pretty uh, successful events with quite a few people turning up. Uh, I think it's a great evening out. I think people enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a funny evening, and um, lots of ideas get talked about, and as with everything else, some of them get come to fruition and some don't. Lots of lively conversation going on at those events. Let's put it like that. Come along. Right. You won't be disappointed. You might be surprised. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely <laughs> worth coming along. And um, they are, um, you know, um, the, 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 the drinks evenings are, are usually very well attended. And, and I think uh, it's the event that most people try and make a, um, an appointment to come to because it's it, it's, it starts straight after work sort of thing, so people often come in for a drink or two after, after finishing work before they go home. And then, of course, on the Saturday, we've got our regular market slot, Elle's Kitchen, come along, best bacon sandwich and cup of tea in Watford. I generally have coffee, but last week I did have tea and uh, went down very well indeed. So if you want a nice cup of builder's tea with a bacon and egg roll, uh, you can't do better than Elle's Kitchen, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, come down and meet us. Um, I think that's just about it, really. Uh, I want to just sum up by just saying, um, people of Rickmansworth and people of Croxley, if you are watching this, do get involved. There's a lady that runs the, Linda that runs the kitchen Croxley, which is, we're going to have our first event there on the 21st of April. Uh, she's really looking forward to that. Do come along and support that. We used to be at the uh, Rising Sun. We've moved up the road a mile or so. Uh, real local, independent coffee shop. Lovely local lady who runs it. Bakes cakes to die for. Do come and join us there. Uh, we do need... Uh, it'd be great to support her and really fill the shop up. So, uh, uh, brilliant if you can make that. And, and Rickman's worth, you know... Rickman's is a different place to Watford. We want the people from Ricky to help us build Rickman's Worth. So do come and get involved, people of Rickman's Worth. That's it. I'm done. Anything else to add? I was just going to say the same for the people of Bushy because we, we do have a, um, a drinks event happening there uh, Thursday week um, in uh, in kind of Bushy Heath area. Um, three so Crowns? Uh, pardon? The three Crowns? Three Crowns, that's it. Glad you, glad you could remember the name of the pub. I couldn't. Um, so I, it, it's um, you know it's just starting out. It'd be great if people of Bush, if you live in that kind of area, could call in and find out more about what we do and what we're all about. Fabulous. Okay, that's it. We're done. Um, thanks for being on the show today, um, Diane. <laughs> and. Uh, Next week, we may have a couple of uh, other guests. You never know. It'd be nice to get one or two people to come and join us just as a, a guest, three or four minute, five minute slot. Uh, might get uh, Neil from uh, Reason On. Might actually get the green candidate on. Let's see if he is brave enough. Maybe even one of the market traders. Trouble is, they're actually still trading at this time of night. So uh, sometimes that's quite difficult. But. Uh, we're out there ferreting away. If you know anybody that might want to come on the show and have a quick uh, put in their uh, input, it might be a charity, it might be a local business, doesn't really matter. If you've got somebody or you know someone or it's you, do uh, do put yourself forward. You can email this email address I'm just holding up here, which is L4G, uh, sorry, Southwest Hearts DL at linkforgrowth.biz, or why not just tweet that uh, Twitter handle? L4G SW Hearts and uh, make yourself known. Yeah. 
And of course, there is one other thing that we've forgotten about talking about elections. I know that you, outside of Link for Growth, are planning to do some interviews, follow up interviews um, with each of the uh, candidates where um, people will be invited to join in and uh, ask questions of the candidates. Yeah, and, and they're being scheduled at the moment. They will happen between the 16th and the end of the month. Uh, the green one, I dropped Aidan an email earlier on today. I'm hoping to get that scheduled in for Thursday or Wednesday night next week. And then uh, and then we'll do it all again. Uh, but Matthew Tomain from Labour, Richard Harrington's already said yes. Uh, Nick Lincoln won't have a problem. Uh, the Greens won't. So it's just Dorothy, really. Dorothy Thornhill. We need to email Dorothy. So, uh, But once I've got all of those uh, plugged in, then I can give the full schedule and we'll get them all set up. And uh, away we go. Fantastic. Great. All right. Again, thanks for joining me, Diane. And uh, in two weeks' time, I hear you're going to take on the show and run it yourself. I'll be away in uh, Budapest. Uh, I may do a cameo slot for you. Oh, thank you. From our foreign correspondent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, cheerio, then, everyone. For, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you all again next week. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.